Hey, in this lesson, we're going to be going over Visual Studio Code. So that's the editor, then suggested editor to be used for coding the upcoming lessons of this course. You can download Visual Studio Code at code.visualstudio.com. And again, this lesson is for those of you that are going to be using Visual Studio Code. So I'm going to show you some brief explanation of how to get started with it, as well as some of the options and extensions that are available within the Visual Studio Code. So starting off, going over to code.visualstudio.com, you can download and select the version for your computer. So whether you're using Mac, Mac, Windows, Linux, download the current version, so the stable version, and go through the install of that application. Once you've installed the application, then you can go ahead and you can launch the application. So this is Visual Studio Code, and it's gonna start out with a welcome page on startup. Uh, so you can go through the welcome page, and this is where it's got some really useful information, such as the different tools and languages. So you can select the support for the different tools and languages by setting up different extensions for those tools and languages. There's also the settings and key bindings. So what this will do is this will allow you to install some of the settings, key bindings, as well as set different settings and key bindings. There's also a color theme. So you can really easily switch between different themes uh, as well as you can add additional themes. So by default, I usually just use the dark plus, which is the default dark, uh, but there's a bunch of different themes that you can select from. So whatever one is most comfortable for you, you can go ahead and select the theme or you could just go ahead and stick with the dark color one, the same one that I'm using. And there's more options down here under learn where you can get all the different commands. There's also an interface overview. Uh, so when you click this, this will give you a quick overview of the interface as well as the shortcut for your computer in order to access it. So you've got the file explorer, the search across files, the source code management, launch and debug managing extensions. Uh, so this is where they're gonna be located, the notifications, and then where you can find all of the commands. And that's within the command pot panel that's gonna pop up. Uh, so you can always select that inner that interface overview and that will show you all the major components there's also an interactive playground uh, so this will give you a brief overview of some interactive tips and information that's useful for coding within visual studio code uh, as well as it's got some documentation that you can click to through the link here you can go over to the documentation on the website and there's a bunch of options here for commonly used functionality within the editor. So you can completely customize the editor. So whether you're used to different keyboard shortcuts that you might have used in other editors, you can set those shortcuts up as well within this editor. And the welcome screen. So once you've gone through and once you're more comfortable with working with Visual Studio Code, you don't need to always have the startup screen so you can uncheck that. If you ever do want it back, then you can go to the help and under help, you can always pop up the same welcome screen. There's also under help, there's a search. So that's a useful format to search out all of the different functions that are available within the editor. There's a getting started guide. So this will walk you through how to get started with the Visual Studio Code. So everything that you need in order to learn more about Visual Studio Code is available under the help menu. And I'm just gonna go back to the welcome. So that's the starting page that's uh, by default. And you've got some options here where you can create a new file, where you can open a folder, and as well you can clone a repository. So if you want to create a new file, then just go ahead and create the new file. And then within here, you can set up a basic file document. So I'm gonna just create a regular HTML file. I'm gonna increase the speed right now, just uh, create the file. So we select to save the file where we want to save it on our computer. So you just uh, locate the folder that you want to save it in and then give the file a name. Let's call it test HTML. Once you enter in the extension, it's going to automatically detect what type of file it is. There's a few other menu bars that uh, we can show up. So we can show the activity bar, which is there on the left hand side. So what the activity bar is, this will contain information that is typically for the current folders, the search and so on. So that's the current folder structure that we're working off of. So there's the main folder directory that we're in. Uh, there's also a search. There's a source control. We can run and do a debug and then select various extensions that we might want to use for this particular workspace. 
Uh, and then there's also accounts and manage. So that's available within the left activity bar. So for the most part, I'm not going to be showing this uh, so that I've got more space on the screen as we are going through the lessons. But of course, you're able to use the activity bar to be more productive and be able to access the various functions of the editor quickly. There's also a status bar option. So that's that bar there at the bottom. So I'm going to go ahead and hide the activity bar. And within the status bar, and I'm also going to minimize those extensions. So within the status bar, so that's going to show up at the bottom. It's going to give us the line number, the call column, uh, number of spaces, UTF, uh, also the language. So it's automatically detecting the language of the file. We've also got some extensions in here and I'll show you how to set up the go live extension. So what this does is this allows us to launch this as a web page within the local host right on our computer. And there's a few other options down here for the notifications. So for the most part, again, I try to hide a lot of this stuff while I'm recording the content for the courses. But of course, you are able to keep it open if it's uh, beneficial to you as you are coding. Uh, there's also an option to open up the panel. So this includes any output, any problems that it might detect with the file. And then there's also the terminal and there's a debug console. So it's really good for debugging as well as to run code and syntax within the terminal if uh, it's needed within the application that you're developing. So that gives you a really good option as well. You can open up the terminal in the tabs at the top. Uh, so you can also split the terminal so you can have multiple terminal instances running at the same time. Again, also within the view, you can select the sidebar and the sidebar is just giving us all of the different extensions. Uh, so right now, some of the extensions that I do recommend and that I do use fairly frequently are the Beautify. There's also the JavaScript, the ES6 code snippets. Uh, so this gives you some features for JavaScript and getting some code snippets done in JavaScript. There's also the live server. Uh, so this is the one that I just mentioned that gives me the go live option. Uh, so if you don't have this installed, this is a really good feature within the Visual Studio Code where you can launch the web development environment within a local server. Uh, so that would be running within the HTTP protocol as opposed to the file protocol, which is different than when you just open up the file with the uh, location on your computer system or dragging the file into a browser. So it's uh, different than dragging it into the browser where you end up with the file extension. And for some of the code, especially for the Ajax requests, it suggested that one of the best ways to develop is to set up a local machine. Uh, so you could go ahead and install the live server extension. So this is a suggested one. And once you've installed it, then you can have the option to go live where you can click anywhere on the HTML page and open up the pop-up window that will let you open with live server. You can also use the shortcuts for your computer to open it up in the live server, or you can use the link at the bottom to open it up in the live server. So what that will do is it will launch the same file within a local server using a port address. So it's using port 5500, and it's treating that folder, that base folder path as the root for the server. So when we go to see the different files that we have running, activity bar, and we go to the explorer, so it's treating all of these files as the root for the web server, for the local web server. So all of these you can access directly by just typing in the local host, the port address, and forward slashing. And of course, if you have a folder within the workspace, so I'm adding in a new folder called test within the workspace, and what I'll do is I'll save this file or I can move it into test. So we'll just move it into test. We'll go back out to the live server just to show you the what's uh, how it's working. Uh, so of course this file path now has changed. So if we want to access it locally, we'd have to include the parent folder. And as well here, it's the same idea that we have to have the folder path in order to access the file. So that's gonna be accessing the same file using the file protocol with the local machine. And that's all done with the live server. So there's no additional installation. Uh, you can configure your extensions. So if you go to the extensions, if you go to the live server and you click on the cog, you can do an extension settings. So this gives you some more options if you wanna really customize the 
live server environment. There's also some port settings down here, but generally by default, you can just run with the default settings for the live server in order to get it going quickly. And this pops up a separate tab here within the tabs that you've got for the files. So you can close that. You can also open these up on separate windows. You can drag and drop it into the separate window. So if you do want to do the split screen type effect, then you can do that with the different files as you open them up. So you can also close the file and you could also just uh, close off that separate screen window by dragging it closed. So that's also a really nice feature that you can have so many different windows open. I'm gonna just close off some of these and I'm just going under view and closing off some of the extra screens. So the rest of the menu is fairly typical. You can go under the code, you can go under preferences, open up the extension. You can have settings where you can customize the settings of the Visual Studio Code. You can set your own keyboard shortcuts, keyboard maps, update the color theme, change the file icon theme, quit the Visual Studio Code. And then there's under file, there's the typical opening a new file. So that's what we already showed you. But if you want to create another new file, you can just do new file. Uh, you can also open it up with an, a new window. You can add a folder to the workspace. So by default, it's uh, within the root workspace. So usually what I do is I just save to the workspace. But if you do want to set up separate workspaces for the different projects that you're working on, you're able to do that as well and save the different environments to each one of those product projects. There's the save. You can save as, so that will be saving the file as a different name. There's an auto save feature, which will automatically do a save saves to the file. So you don't have to go to do a separate save. You can do a revert of the file. You can close the editor, close the workspace, close the window. Under edit, you've got the defaults where you've got undo, redo, cut, copy, paste, find, replace, uh, find in files, replace in files. So that's if you want to search out all of the files and do mass find or replace within multiple files. There's also the blocking of the comments. And then there's some of the extension options here under edit. You can also do dictation and there's emojis so there's a selection. So if you want to select using the keyboard shortcuts, there's also the view. So we've been showing you some of the view options. Uh, I typically do do a word wrap. Uh, so that way, if I do have my screen minimized, it will wrap the words to the next line. So when you do do the word wrap, it will wrap it so that you can see the lines to the next line and open this back up to the full size. And then under go, so this is a quick way to go to a file, go to a symbol within the workspace. You can switch the editor, you can switch the group. So there's a bunch of options there to quickly move between the different screens. Uh, there's also the starting of the debugging and you can set different breakpoints that will stop the execution. And this is all really good for debugging of your applications. So you can disable breakpoints, enable breakpoints. Terminal, once again, that gives you an option to run the terminal directly within the editor. So that saves you having setting up a separate terminal and also flipping through the different applications. So a lot of times if you've got a terminal, you need shell access, you're gonna have the terminal open and your editor. Uh, so this gives you the ability just to have it all within the one editor. You can also do a split screen on the terminal as well. And then under the window, so you have the options for minimizing, zooming, and also uh, switching the windows, and then also switching to the different files that are currently open within the window. So this has been a quick overview of the Visual Studio Code, really powerful web editor uh, for writing code in various languages. And if you wanna always find out more about it, a ton of information under help, as well as they've got a lot of options within their website that will give you I did, again, more detailed information. So if you go to the documentation, that will bring you right to their website where they've got the documentation. So you can go through the setup of it on the different platforms. It's the getting started. So there's some tips and tricks. Uh, there's also under the user guide. Uh, so this is a basic editing user guide, uh, just different options that you have with keyboard shortcuts. And if you go under basic editing, and select the keyboard shortcuts reference. Uh, that will bring you to where there's some shortcuts for some 
PDF guides for the different keyboard shortcut reference uh, so that you could download these PDF guides and have a quick reference for the various keyboard shortcuts. As well, the keyboard shortcuts are also available within the editor. So a lot of documentation. They've got a lot of examples here of what you can do with the Visual Studio Code. The more you work with it, the more familiar and comfortable you'll become with this editor. And you'll see that there's a lot of options and pretty much anything you need to write code is available within Visual Studio Code. So go ahead, check it out. And thanks again for watching this video.